Hey guys, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for checking out this video. I appreciate the love and the support you show. Um, if you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, comment, share the video. Any and all support is much appreciated. I love you guys and you know I'm excited about sharing, you know, these different, you know, videos and different aspects of my life and passions that I have. So once again, thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love and Hit that subscribe button, like it, comment, share, let me know your thoughts, and enjoy the video. Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to discuss how uh, failing first grade impacted, changed my life um, up to this moment. So, I don't know how many people actually know that... Um, had to repeat first grade I mean you're probably thinking who who feels first grade is first grade <laughs> what did you do wrong not to feel first grade yeah. Uh, but yeah I mean I feel first grade and probably rightfully so but I'm just gonna take you back to I don't know 95 96 um, you know my mindset you know all who I was up to this point and um yeah just discuss that how that impacted me today so in first grade my first my first grade teacher i remember her name was um mrs avaney um she um i mean she was a cool teacher but i don't think she she you know she was the best teacher or she was the teacher for for me anyway so but some of the reasons why I say, you know, I think I was rightfully so that I got kept back in our first grade was so. I mean, you ever you ever look back in your life and there's some things you can remember, um, you know, visually you can remember so easily. And I remember, you know, one one day in you know first grade class, she's like, "All right, we're gonna work on spelling our names," and. As an example, she wrote her own name down on the uh, on the chalkboard, and she wrote Mrs. Avaney. That was her name. Um, so we're supposed to write our names down, and what I did was, on my paper, I wrote Mrs. Avaney, and I was supposed to write Craig Barton. Um, so that was just one thing that really stood out to me as to, well, I probably needed to why I needed to uh, repeat first grade. You know, just simple things like that I wasn't catching on, I wasn't, you know, comprehending correctly. Um, so, yeah, I'm not mad about it, but it's probably um, a good good thing to actually, you know, got held back and, you know, did that. Um, one of the things that I really remember, um, I guess the outcome of, having to repeat first grade was I had to go into like, you know, a special education classroom, special ed, a sped class. So I don't know if they still call it that sometimes, but those are the different names, the, the, you know, the slow class, all those different things. Um, I had to take a special education class. Um, and every time I would, the special education teacher would come to the classroom and pick us up all the kids would just start laughing and making fun of me because I was the only one in our class that had to take special, take the special education class. And, you know, I can still remember all the laughs, the jokes, and everything like that. And I'm telling you, it just ate me up inside. I just, you know, till, like I said, till this day, I remember it. It don't affect me the same way. But back then, you know, first grade, First grade again, second grade, third grade, you know, it just really like, I don't know, it just, it really, you know, stuck with me. And I was like, uh, I, really, I really don't like this. I hate this. I hate this feeling, you know, having, you know, needing special attention, having to, you know, you know, feel like I'm, I'm slow or something. But the class itself, the special education class itself was, I love that class. I love the teacher. Uh, Mrs. Lachlan was a special education teacher. I, I love that lady. She, I feel like she really, you know, helped me understand and comprehend things um, at a much higher level than my primary uh, teachers um, would. 
So, in that class, she would have us do, like, spelling quizzes, and, you know, you got to read, a, um, you know, vocab words, and spell vocab words, read sentences, and the first couple months in that class, I was having a tough time. I couldn't read nothing. I couldn't say nothing, write nothing. Um, it was just having a hard time. And I think I was one of the worst people in the special, edu special education class. Um, until, you know, I, I started to catch on eventually. And once I started to catch on, it, I don't know, something clicked. And I started to go from the bottom to the top of the special education class. And not only the special education class, but in my primary first grade class, um, I was one of the better students overall uh, because she helped me comprehend in such a such a better way. Um, so one thing I remember, I still remember to this day visually is um, one of the vocab quizzes. You know, she was like, "Read all these, read all these vocab words until you got it wrong." And you would get a grade. I read like three three pages of vocab words, and I was like on top of the world. I was like, yes, yes, I got this. This is so easy. I was enjoying the class. I was enjoying that I was learning and comprehending this this stuff, and you know, I felt great. So I got like A's, A's, and A's for like two months then <laughs> she looked at me one day after we completed um vocab words she's like you don't belong in this classroom anymore and i was like what are you talking about i've been coming here for like five months of course i belong in here and that just shows how much my attitude changed at first i was like no 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 i don't want to be in a special education classroom and you know, being kept back to i was really i really enjoyed that class i, I enjoyed the kids i loved the teacher and I was really, I was learning, I was comprehending, and, you know, I was really, like, showing off. I was like, I know this word, I know compound words, I know how to say syllables. I was really, I was, you know, really enjoying myself in that, in that class. Then she like, you don't belong in this classroom no more. I was like, why? She like, you don't need, you don't need it anymore. So I was like, huh. So she walked me back to my regular classroom, and I was like... Uh, I'm back with these people again, <laughs> and you know I, that was my last time in that class. And I remember, you know, just walking by that class for you know going to gym class, library, just looking in there, and you know seeing all the kids I was in the classroom with, and I was like, oh, I wish I was in there again. Um, but yeah, all that you know came came about, you know, just really, you know not really comprehending things my first year in first grade and then my second year I was in the special education class is what I really started to catch on but you know it came it came at the expense of a lot of jokes it came at a lot of you know laughing being you know snickering just a lot of stuff and I just you know it, it was hard for a first grader is basically what I'm saying um I, you know I didn't enjoy it I, all my all my friends um you know, they were in second grade, and I was still in first grade. I was like, you know, I was just feeling so embarrassed, and like, I don't want to be here. Now I'm in the same grade with my brother, and this is like all this stuff. I'm, like, I'm with these babies, so. But that was that was you know kind of my first grade experience and what I went through, you know how I felt during that, and how I eventually, you know, got out special got out of the special education uh, classroom anyway. So, you know, I'm doing good in first grade. I'm doing good in second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Um, everybody I knew was a class ahead of me now, a grade ahead of me. And, you know, I was like, it's whatever. But a few things that really stuck with me was <laughs> the, the laughing and the, the jokes and, oh, Craig, you still, in, you still in first grade or we in second grade now or... Um, you in third grade, we in fourth grade now, cause the, the elementary school, the grade school I went to, it was like grades one through six. So you grew up with these kids from you know first grade to sixth grade, and if you went to the same middle school, high school, you know, oh Craig, you still in this grade? We're in this grade now, and 
it like I don't say haunted, but they it was just a constant reminder for so many years. And after you know, so going so long, we just like kind of feeling bad about myself. I was like. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm just as smart as them, you know, at this point. I'm just, and I'm in this grade, you know, because I got kept back. And the way that affected me to this point and, you know, growing up was I had the attitude that I was like, I don't want no one to ever think of me as dumb again. I don't want no one to ever think of me as slow again. I'm going to be the best student I could possibly be. Um, and I'm not just gonna be a good student I'm gonna show off about it and that was something that really helped me be a good student it's not that I necessarily was a good student it's just like I did I didn't want to do anything that would have anybody like laughing at me anymore um, I wanted to show everybody I was like I'm not dumb I'm not slow um, I don't need special education anymore I'm just as good if not better and smarter than you so you know, we'll be up in like sixth grade, middle school, even up to high school. I'm like, I got an A on this test. Would you get a D? You know, I was just really kind of like, you know, rubbing it in people's faces. And even like probably up to adulthood, you know, I'm not like, you know, you mature. So you're not, you know, I'm not rubbing, you know, things in people's faces, faces anymore. But it affected me to the point where I was like, I need to have you know, excellence in everything that I do, especially in the form of education. I, I never wanted to, you know, be just another number. I don't, I never wanted to, you know, be a, a statistic. I didn't, you know, want to be somebody who's out on the street. Cause to me that symbolized, you know, somebody who's dumb, they ain't got no discipline to stay in school. And to me, education was the key to, you know, whatever I wanted to be. So, I use that education as a tool to show that I'm not I'm not slow anymore. I'm not the special I'm not special ed Craig anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm like I'm like 4.0 Craig. You know, I'm A plus Craig now. I'm excellent. And that rolled over to, you know, from grade school to college to, you know, my adult life where everything I do now, I have to do it at a level of excellence. I can't do anything mediocre and I'm sure not going to do anything at a feeling level because it drove me from failing and repeating first grade. I never wanted to, um, you know, have that feeling of embarrassment again. I figured if they could laugh at you in first grade, they'll laugh at you when you're an adult. You know what I mean? No one ever, you know, no one ever asks as a favor. No one ever asks as, um, for money from a broke person. You know, they don't, you know, they figure, hey, you ain't got nothing. What's the, what, is, what is there to get from you? Um, but my point is, I never wanted to be looked at as, as a bum. You know, I never wanted to be looked at as, you know, somebody who was below average or, or dumb. Whether it was back in first grade up to, you know, an adult now. Everything I do has to be, you know, at a level of excellence, you know, or near perfection. And um, I can say that really came from being kept back in first grade. You know, that really... You know, I, I don't get sad about it. And like I said, I'm glad and it was probably correct that I needed to do first grade over again. But the way it affected me and molded me today, I have to do things at a level of excellence. And I don't want anyone to, you know, look at me as just average or, you know, dumb. No, I don't. I mean, I don't have to be the best, but, you know, I'm going to be one of the best. I'm going to do things at the best level I can possibly do. Um... So, you know, I just wanted to share that story of, you know, just how repeating first grade and going through special education, you know, kind of, you know, molded me to in this way today um, as an adult, as, you know, 29 years old, you know, um, you know, I still remember, you know, how it felt to get kicked back, how it felt to, you know, be in special education class, how to, how to you know, how it felt to be laughed at. To, you know be the butt of the jokes and you know I'm not sad about it but I was like I never want to feel that ever again and um, there's no there's no glory there's no um, nothing good about you know being looked at as dumb or slow so I was like if I can help it I'm gonna be the best I can possibly be I'm gonna be better than you so you know and you know just growing up 
as a man growing up spiritually, you know, you learn humility. Humility was something I had to, you know, definitely embrace and learn. Um, Cause if you exalt yourself, God will humble you. So I was like, Lord, I'm gonna humble myself. I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to have to humble me. Um, so you know, I had to take that attitude from like, yeah, I'm the best and I'm better than you to, you know, just kind of doing the best I can and humbling myself and being humble and having humility about it in the same process. So um, yeah, that was my story about you know being kept back in first grade, special education class, how that affected me and how that drives me today. Um, if you didn't know that before, now you know, and yeah, but you know, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this little story and you know, I'll catch you, catch you on the next one.